All right, hello, this is section 4.5, solving quadratic equations. Goal is pretty much what the name says there, is to solve a quadratic equation, and there's a few different ways to solve them. We're going to use uh, factoring to solve them today. So before we get started, I thought it would uh, be helpful to think through uh, a little bit of review stuff. So like, what is a quadratic equation? What does it mean to factor? And then factor one, like actually do it once, right? So pause the video and see what you can remember here. Okay, so a quadratic equation is just an equation with x squared in it, right? So that exponent, like if it's the highest exponent is one, that's called linear. And then a quadratic is x squared. And then later we'll study stuff like x cubed, x to the fourth and stuff. For now we're focusing on x squared. And factor just means to break apart. So the most basic, if you just factor x squared, that actually just breaks apart to x times x, right? Uh, so factor just means break apart. You could factor, say, 10 breaks into 2 times 5, right? So it's just sort of break apart, reverse the multiply process. And then this factor question, when you factor, you always want to look for a GCF. So this one has a GCF of 5. So we can pull the 5 to the front. And then from there, uh, we have a 5 in front, and then the x squared minus 4, we can put x and x here for the x squared, and then for the minus 4, you can put minus 2 and plus 2, um, because that will multiply to negative 4 and add up to 0 in the middle. So in that case, we factored it apart. Okay, so uh, we're going to do, like, the big part of the rest of this chapter is to solve quadratics, x squared, all right? And... The, the hard part about this is it's different than a linear. So what I mean by that is back when you had linear, let's say we had 2x plus 1 equals 11. You just minus 1, divide by 2, blah, 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 and you get 5. Okay, so what happens is when you hit x squared, students want to do the same thing, right? So I'm going to put up, uh, I don't know, an x squared one here. Right, so they're going to take this and they're going to say, well, I'm going to do my same algebra steps to this one. Right, I'm going to minus the 5x and minus the 6. So I get x squared equals minus 5x minus 6. And then they say, okay, I'm going to cancel out this square by square rooting. And then they're like, look at me. I got x alone. Right, These cancel out. I got x alone. But all you get on this side is some weird expression that also involves x. And so you're really no closer to solving it than when you had started. Okay, So the point of this is to say, Algebra steps works well in linear, works great in linear world. In quadratic world, it only sometimes works. And throughout this chapter, we'll talk about when does it work. Um, but it, it just know that it doesn't always work. Okay, And so the way to solve a quadratic if algebra steps doesn't work is we have three other methods. You can graph it. Um, you can use the quadratic formula, which we'll review later. And then today's lesson is going to be about solving by factoring, by breaking it apart. And actually, when you break it apart, you get two linear things, and then you can solve the linear things using algebra steps. All right, so that's an introduction. Um, so how we're going to do this, how we're going to solve, is something called the zero product property, which it kind of makes sense. Like if you, you can even pause it and try and figure this out. If you know that A times B is zero, this thing times this thing is zero, then what has to be true of either A or B? All right, hopefully you had a chance to think about it. And if they multiply to zero, then either A has to be zero or B has to be zero, right? Because one of them, like if A is zero, I have zero times whatever the heck B is, and that's going to be zero, right? Because zero times anything is just zero. Okay, so how we use this on a quadratic solve one is we're going to get X, get all of it on one side and zero on the other side. And then we're going to factor. Right? And there's all those different types of factoring we learned about in the last section. So we'll check for a GCF, but there isn't a GCF here. And then we're going to do the, the factoring where we know that it's x and x because of this x squared. And then it has to multiply to negative 10 and add up to negative 3. So I believe 5 and 2 will work, as long as the 5 is the negative one. Okay, so we get these little two things. So now we have something times something, and we want it to be zero, just like we do with the zero product property. So in order for it to equal zero, either the first part, A, has to be zero, or B has to be zero. 
So either the first little parenthesis has to make zero or the second one. So if we were to solve this one, we would just add five to both sides. And one of our answers is five for x. And then minus two here. And then our other answer is negative two for x. Okay, and so I think that it gets a little confusing of like what we did. So just to help us make sure we understand this, like we're saying five is an answer to this. So five for x will make this come out as zero. So if we try that, just to check our answer, five squared minus three times five minus 10, that should be zero if we did it right. Right, so we'd have 25 minus 15 minus 10. We can see that that does equal zero. Okay, so for sure, that's one of the answers that works. All right, and then just to understand the zero product property, because I think students, they get lost when it's here. So we're saying that like, when x is 5, that makes this first parenthesis 0 in factored form here. So if x is 5, we have 5 minus 5 times 5 plus 2. And we're saying that should be 0, right? And it is because 0 times 7 is 0, right? So that's another way to kind of check our answer. So the, the idea is you can make the print, this parenthesis 0 as long as x is 5. Hopefully that made sense. If, if not... You know, just know this process at least, uh, and that we're using what's called the zero product property. When we get to this step, we have thing times thing has to be zero, or either this parenthesis or that parenthesis has to be zero. So here's our next uh, quadratic equation, and uh, I think we talked about this earlier in the video, but there should be should be two answers to an x squared. The because the exponent's two, there's two answers. Try to get as far as you can on this one, and then I'll pause the video. By the way, I have these nice little clouds in this lesson. To, it's peaceful. By the end, you'll feel peace about being able to solve uh, by factoring. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to try. Get as far as you can. So the first step is you need 0 on one side. So we're going to add 16 to both sides so that we just have plus 16 on the end here. All right, and now that we have 0 on one side, now we're going to factor. Okay, so this is called our factor step. And factor just means to break apart again. So we're going to look for a GCF, but there's no GCF. So uh, this is the one where, again, because you have x squared, we do x and x. And then the other two numbers have to multiply to positive 16 and add up to negative 10. Okay, so we need two negative numbers. And I think uh, 8 and 2 work. So minus 8 minus 2 multiplies to positive 16, adds to negative 10. Now that it's broken apart, all right, now we do our zero product property. So if this times this has to be zero, either the first part has to be zero or the second part has to be zero. Second parenthesis. Okay, so here we're going to just add 8, and we get 8 as one of our answers. Add 2, and we get 2 as the other answer. And again, just to, if, if that zero product doesn't make sense to you, we're saying when x is 2, that makes the second parenthesis 0. And we can see that if we plug it in, right? Because we have 2 minus 2 times 2 minus 8. And we're saying that we want that to be 0, and it should be just fine, right? Because we'll have negative 6 times 0, and that for sure will be 0. Okay, so we for sure can check that that's right. And if you put it way back in the original equation, too, you you'd get that it uh, balances out. You get negative 16 on both sides. All right, slight twist on this one. So again, I'd pause it, give it everything you got, and then unpause. All right, so this one starts the same as the previous question, where we want to get uh, 0 on one side, so we're going to minus 15. Okay, what's different is the factoring here. Uh, we can check for a GCF but nothing evenly divides all three parts, so we don't have a DCF. And then because of this 2 out front, we can't do our quick little factor where we just put x and x here, right? Because that does not multiply to 2x squared, so we've got to do that long factor process, right? So that's how this one is different, is it's just the longer factor, okay? And so, again, I would pause this and try the longer factor if you haven't already tried it. See what you can remember. See, any steps you remember... Um, get as far as you can. It'll be much more meaningful trying to do it without just watching me. Okay, 
So long factor starts by multiplying this front number times the negative 15 to get negative 30. And then it has to add up to 1 in the middle here, positive 1. So I'm going to need 1 negative and 1 positive to multiply to a negative. And I think 5 and 6 will work as long as the 5 is the negative. Right? That'll add up to positive 1. So on this step, all we're saying is positive 1x is the same thing as a plus 6x minus 5x. Right, those combined are the same thing as 1x. Okay, and then the other parts you just bring down. So we split this middle term, and then we have 2x squared here, and then minus 15 here. Bring them down. It's kind of got messy, so I'll clean it up a little bit. And then uh, we group. So we group the front two, group the back two, and pull out GCFs. So out of the front two, uh, you can take out a 2, and then also a single x. And divide that out so you have just x up here and then the x is gone here but 6 divided by 2 is 3 and then back here you can take out a negative 5 since they're both negative pull out a negative so you get an x plus 3 okay and then uh, now we just take whatever in front so we have 2x minus 5 times x plus 3 Okay, and that's the factor step, right? So we're solving by factoring, and all of that's called factor. Okay, and then the solve step is when you set them to zero. So this times this is zero. We use our zero product property and say, okay, either this part has to be zero or this part has to be zero. This one's pretty straightforward. It's minus three from both sides, and that gives us one answer for x. And then this one's a little tricky. we got to add five. And then divide by 2. So 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. And that gives us our second answer for x. So we get 2.5 and negative 3 as our answers. Okay, again, a slightly different one here. And what's different is not the idea of how you solve it by factoring, but uh, the actual factoring is different. So pause the video, give it a shot. All right, so again, we're solving a quadratic by factoring. So the quadratic is just the fact that it's x squared. And then to factor, we want to get 0 on one side. So we're going to minus 4x. Okay, and then all that's different is the factoring looks different. So these both have x, and they both have 2. So we're going to do a GCF factor, pull out a 2x. Leaves us with a single x here and a minus 2. Okay. And now I'll set these two little parts. So it, I know it looks different, but we can set 2x equal to 0. And then we set x minus 2 to 0. And so this we just divide by 2 to get rid of the times 2. And 0 divided by 2 is just 0. So we have one answer of 0. And then add 2 here, and we get another answer of 2. Okay, and again, you can kind of see this is weird that we got a 0 answer, but it makes sense, right? If, if x is 0, 2 times 0 squared definitely equals 4 times 0. So that certainly is a way to make the equation balance. All right, so just to summarize, this video we solved an x squared by factoring. Okay, and so it's one of the methods for solving, and you don't want to do, typically you don't want to do algebra steps, right? So like, we go back to this one where we tried algebra steps. We could actually factor that. That factors to x plus 2 times x plus 3, right? Multiply to 6 and add to 5. And then you set both parts to zero, and boom, you got your answers. Okay, and basically these are linear, right? Once you're here, we have two linear equations, x to the first equations, and then you can solve those like normal with algebra steps. Okay, so hopefully that concept makes you sense, because as they get harder, as we get higher exponents, we're going to factor them apart to linear stuff, and then we can solve them how we use algebra steps like we normally did. Right, um, and that's the idea of factoring is you break it into simpler problems and then solve those problems using the zero product property. All right, that concludes the video. Thanks for watching.